Hi, I'm Monty. Welcome back to Second Hand DIY, and today we're going to start on teaching how to make the front wheel. Uh, we will not complete the wheel today, but we will get you a start on it. We're going to give you a rundown of some of the tools that we will be needed. Um, so one of the first things that we will be that I use that I'll show you the tool is this nice little file set. I got these Harbor Freight tools. And here is actual the SKU number on the package. And these were like five bucks, so they're fairly cheap to get started with. Uh, the type of glue I use, I got this at Walmart. This is the glue I use. I found it works best for me. We already got an open bottle that we've been using. Um, a set of uh, micro twist bits. I purchased these off of eBay. And then we have a uh, pen vise. This is what this is called. This is a pen vise. And actually, I believe I ordered this one off of eBay too. We have different kinds, plenty that you could choose from. And then in this little uh, tubware container, I keep baking soda, which I use as well in making the wheel. So we're going to start off with a couple of uh, can lids, tops. Um, we're going to use two different sizes. It's going to take two of each. Um, these came off of a uh, half and half tea, and these came off of a Pepsi. As you can see, the half and half is just a little bit bigger. And we're going to start with those first. These two smaller ones will be used to make the back wheel. And the two larger ones will be used to make the front wheel. In symmetrics of a real motorcycle, the front rim is always a hair bit bigger around than the back wheel than most I've ever looked at. And we will need a piece of 80 grit sandpaper or 120 or whatever you have on hand. Actually, I believe I have 120. I have some 120 on hand. And all we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're evenly firm pressure on it and we're just going to do this. And we're going to do that until we're able to pop this center out of the outer edge. And that, that's how we're going to start making our rim. doing this in real time too, so unlike any of the other people that do anything like this, that just do a quick cutaway. I'm not big on editing yet, so I'm going to try to do most of my videos just straight out and raw. <coughs> Move my microphone a little air, sorry if that's interrupting anybody. Um, we can sit here and have a discussion while I do this. I uh, like the game. Uh, well, I don't really like to play one game anymore. And, uh, like Final Fantasy XI, I started on that 20 some years ago on the Pandemonium server. Uh, my name that I use and I I like to use, I go by, I like to go on here by Monty. 
<coughs> the old mod beat my character on Final Fantasy XI, the Taru. His uh, main job when he first started out was White Mage. And then he ended up switching to Black Mage. Uh, prefer the, preferred the Black Mage job over the White Mage, but now I do do like doing White Mage too sometimes. Almost got it to where it's off. Here, let's shake this off in the trash. Get a little excess buildup on the there. <coughs> And my wife, uh, she loves to uh, play the game too. We started the game together back 20 some years, about 20 years ago. And uh, we now play on a uh, private server called Horizon XI. Anybody's ever on there, look us up. Uh, she goes by Half Fight, I go by Monty. I uh, black mage, she's normally white mage anymore. Oh, it's just, there it goes, there it goes. And there you go. That's what you're trying to succeed with right there. Right, there's what you want to do. Okay, this piece, we'll throw it aside. This is the part we're looking for main. This is going to be one side of the rim. What we're going to end up doing is we're going to try to make uh, something that looks more like this when we're done. You see I super glued them together and used a little baking soda to help hold them together and make them strong. So, let's clean off our Crash there. Okay. Now we'll do the same thing again. But old Monty and Half Pint, we started out on Pandemonia server. Uh, we uh, got to a link show called Explicit. Wonderful group of people. Uh, most of them were uh, military service people who, in their downtime, they could leisurely get on. So that was quite interesting. Uh, I learned how to play the game through a group of people who ran missions in the military. So they were great at running missions in the game. Let me tell you, we did a lot of things together. Had a lot of fun. And eventually Pandemonium server got took down and we got put to uh, Azure. And our characters still reside on this earth. Uh, we haven't logged in on there since 2021. Uh, but back in August, about five months ago, in 2023, we uh, cited one of my old LS members from Azure got a hold of me and said, hey, you got to check out this server. It's uh, free to play. Costs you absolutely nothing. You go to horizonxi.com and you download this thing. Create your character. So me and my wife were all into it. We wanted to play, but with the way the expenses are lately, and we live on a tight, tight budget, there just ain't the extra money to buy for a bunch of games and streaming and stuff. So we decided to give this game a shot. Now it's a level 75 cap era game. And it is, uh, it brought back why I wanted to get away from the retail, is it's lost almost all its, uh, working together. I noticed a lot of things on retail anymore, which a lot of my friends have left. Not a lot of people on, re on retail and that now, and it, it's just like, it's a job. They don't stop, have fun. They're too worried about getting to that next level. They're too worried about trying to succeed and everything. But they're missing the real beauty of the game. 
uh, that game especially with all the interesting things to see. So sometimes you just need to step back, slow it down, not take the game so seriously and enjoy the beauty of all the backgrounds and think about all that time it took them guys and gals to design and build this game and take it for the artwork that's in it and the beauty. But on Horizon, now on Horizon XI, it is a wonderful server. There are a lot of wonderful people on it. Um, I've met some awesome people, all walks of life, all over from around the U.S. and that. And they're genuinely uh, like family. They're getting to be like family. They're that nice of people. Of course, you do meet your normal asshole now and then. Not going to mention any names. Of course, I could. I could meet you a lot. I mean, not a whole lot. I've met a couple. But it, it, it's everybody that's been playing it, it's like people that have left retail and have come to this because they all feel the same. Uh, the retail became too overrun with RMTs, which is real money traders. They've wrecked the economy on retail. And they took all the needing to be able to work together away from retail. They made it too modern of a game like... You don't need nobody but yourself. And they took away the community, basically, of it to me. They took away the harmony of working together as much. So I, I really enjoy this Horizon server, even though it's only level 75 cap era. And we don't have all them expansions they have on retail or anything yet. But it... it, it it's a really good place to hang out, and with me, I'm, I'm disabled now. Uh, I can't do hardly anything anymore with my health problems, and of course, I fought cancer, and now I'm uh, struggling with uh, complications that come sometimes when you have cancer like me, and uh, treatments take their toll on your body, especially when your body's in bad shape. That's enough about that. Let's talk more about having the fun in the game. Looky there. So, now we're uh, done with that part. Let's put this paper over out of the way. And we'll use that again when I show you how to make the back wheels. Which will be a repeat of doing this the same. So when we go to do the back wheels, this part will already be done when we do that. But gluing it together is where we'll take off when we do the back wheel. Because the back wheel is made a little different than the front wheel. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to line these up as perfectly as possible. Here's where we go into making a little bit of a mess. You know what? Let, let's run the after we pop them out. Let's uh give this just a like that. And like that. A little bit of a that's what the file is for. We'll clean that up. Don't run your finger around and press. I'm not pressing, I'm you see I'm just barely tapping to see if there's an edge and there's a little bit. Those might be able to cut you if you're not careful. So I'd be careful right there. If you're not uh, feel safe with that part of doing that, you could always just uh, let's get these one here, which is uh, like uh, it's a little bit of a rounded side on it. What we're going to do is we're just going to go like this. We're holding at an angle, kind of like that. And we're just doing that, and that's just to help us remove the burrs. Oop. 
it out of my own hand. I'm not flying when it's excessive. I'm not pressing hard. I'm, there's barely any pressure at all. I'm almost just lightly rubbing it over. And that'll take off that excess, a lot of that excess material. Now we will be doing this again once the wheel is uh, all, all glued and been set up for a while. We'll go back and we'll refile and make this smooth inside once we get it all glued together. Right now I'm just going through and getting these little over excessive burrs that might hold us from getting it aligned properly. So. Where will we at on the game? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I uh, am an elite shell on a Horizon XI. I am a black mage. I am level 75. Half Pint is a level 75 white mage now. I do have all the jobs open. And I have leveled most of them a little bit. There's a good chance you might even catch me in a party on some job. Which I have played. I've been. Uh, I played with uh, some other YouTubers that were streaming on there. And matter of fact, uh, I'll mention one of them that I really like. He's a great guy, and you guys should check out his channel too. Um, he's the one that influenced me to want to come back and start making these videos again. And people just seem to think that these would be the great oh look at that there here's a problem i want to show you see my super glue won't come out this is a common problem with glue and what we're going to do i'm going to get out a uh a sewing needle i keep a couple of sewing needles in my desk drawer for just such a problem These were partially super glued together. Be careful I don't spill that. I'm going to take that. touch that it's gonna have super glue on it. Alright, that should uh, hopefully that opened it up now. Should I just ran it all the way through. Try to get these perfectly lined back up. See, I put a little the super glue, just a little spot. I'm going to put a little baking soda on it. I'm going to blow it off. i tell you what. Uh, this might help you out. Let's just grab a little old paintbrush. When you do that, you can see how that super glue and baking soda has built up a little bit. I'm going to do that just to help me get the rim centered up before I majorly glue it all together. And rotate it about so far around. I'm going to put just a little bit more. Oop, I'm up the camera. Let's do this again. Now this will set up instantly. So you can feel safe pretty well just to do that. And you can see I use very little super glue, just a little little bitty daub. And now that's holding that rim pretty well. Yes, it looks like we've got her pretty close to being perfectly just about perfectly symmetrical. Okay. So I'm gonna give her another dab right there.
it is a very time consuming process to do this. Um, this is not something that you're going to sit down and you're going to pop one of these bikes out in a day. No, no, no. Uh, when I work on one constantly, it could take me a couple of weeks to make one of these bikes to a month. So these projects are kind of uh, long term. They, it's like building any model. If you want it to be nice, you take your time, experiment, see what you can build up, try new things, see what works for you, what don't. See, when we do the back wheel, it's going to have to be a little wider than what the normal cans will be. So we'll uh, cut a uh, piece of aluminum, aluminum can. Looks like it might be off a little bit. And this is something else you can do while you're doing this. See, that was off just the hair it looked like. So that's why I put very thin. So if I have to break a joint, I can break it to make it better. There we go, that's better. And we'll be cutting a strip of aluminum to do the back wheels, which they'll have a, it'll be a five millimeter strip of aluminum that I will glue in between the two halves to make the rim uh, a little bit wider. And I'll show you just when we do it, how we accomplish that. And the other thing is, is uh, drilling the spokes holes in this. That's what the pen vise is for, for drilling holes to run the spokes in it. Now that's a little bit funner of an ordeal. Because uh, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. Maybe I'll give them to you uh, when we go to do the back wheel. But we're going to be using a, a system of a 32 spoke wheel. So each side gets 16 little pinholes in it because uh, they have to be offset and staggered for it to uh, properly pull the rim straight. Just like a real bike wheel. Of course they have multiple different spoke numbers but we're going with 32. That's a easier number for us to do all the math and all the drilling and Yes, I did say math. <laughs> Hopefully you're good at your math. Uh, basically, you're going to be uh, doing, taking a measurement. Like I did, I used a piece of like, uh, you could use like a piece of yarn or a piece of, uh, oh, say like a large thread. Um, hang on, I got a piece laying here, I'll show you. Because that's what I did with making mine. I've taken a piece of uh, twine, basically. And what I did is I measured my wheel with a piece of this. I wrapped it around, and right where it was perfect, I held it together and I used a marker and I made these little marks. And then I measured the length of it. And then I divided it into th by 32. So it gave me the width of in between each one of these little marks. They give me a perfect 32 spoke around, and I just drew a line. Everywhere this was, I put a line um, all the way across the wheel. It gives me 32 lines. Of course, you'll, you'll see how we drill that once we do that part. And if we need it more in depth on that, let me know in the comments and I will uh, go in further how we do that with the thread and everything. If you need help with figuring that out, if you want to build one of these. If not, just watch me if you just want to watch. That's all I'm here to do is give you some entertainment. And I've been told people would probably love watching me make this stuff. And no, I do not sell these. These are usually uh, items I make and give away as gifts. Uh, I don't even keep, I haven't even kept any of these for myself. 
Everything I've made has uh, been given away as a gift. You never know if we get enough subscribers, maybe I'll make one and give it away. Uh, we got enough subscribers, enough people to hit that like and share and get us a nice little following. Yeah, then maybe then maybe at that time after we get uh, some, some subscribers and that we'll uh, form what we have. Maybe maybe then we'll give a giveaway. Let's say we get a get a. Let's say if we can get a right now. Let's see if we can get a thousand subscribers to start with, and then when we hit a thousand subscribers, we'll talk. There we go. Oh, I was talking about one of the other YouTubers. I think he has a great job. The Legend of Leviathan. Uh, he was going by Flaming Duck. He has not been playing the game lately. He has gotten into, uh, he has some other games he likes to play. And I don't know if he is, how long of a hiatus he'll be taking, but I know he's playing another game right now. Uh, he follows this channel, so you might see a comment from him. He's a great guy. I believe he goes by Flaming Duck. He's in my link shell too. So. He's a really good guy too. And I know some other uh, YouTubers that are on Horizon. Well, their channel has been taken down for copyright infringement or something. <clears throat> and uh, I support them totally. And I, if anybody heard of Out of Mana, we strongly suggest anybody please uh, try to see if you can, their channel has been uh, deactivated, I believe. But anybody has ever seen Out of Mana, I uh, get, give them some respect. I mean, get, give them, uh, try and think of the proper thing to say. Uh, encouragement to keep on because, you know, they were making decent content. Uh, they're really nice people. I've uh, hung out with them in the game and that, and they are really great people. <coughs> okay, now we got our two halves glued together. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and file that center down from where we had cut them up or where they had been popped apart. We're going to get that seam smoothed over now. You can feel that, and when you get it smooth, that's when you you know you're good enough. All right there's an edge. We'll run down that. This here I'm running more just basically flat across the wheel like this. Not going at an angle, I'm trying to keep it flat.
Okay, we got both got both sides matched up. You're not falling asleep. I got quiet on you. <laughs> but that's what uh, happens when you're doing this stuff. You get quiet because you're concentrating on making sure you get things right. But that's feeling pretty good now. Yep, that feels pretty good. Now if you want, you can uh, get these little file marks out. You can use some real fine sandpaper. I have some uh, not handy right at the moment. I didn't think about getting it out, but I could use uh, some 320. Go around that. If if you get, if they marked up too bad, I mean, you could see some filing marks in this. So I would probably suggest going around it with some 320, which I'll I'll do before I put the spokes in it and that. And another thing is, is I have a uh, put the glue up for now. I have a. Uh, paint that you get at Dollar General. Let me show you what I got. And this stuff is uh, great. This is, uh, here it is. Come on, focus camera. Art seals, crafters, closet, metallic markers. These things are awesome uh, this brand here this is the ones I found that work the best that are awesome come on but I get the gold and the silver and I get these at DG I haven't found them any place anywhere else yet but let me tell you this silver matches you can't, a lot of times you can't even tell you painted silver on this, this aluminium. It matches the, the aluminium that good. So, we'll be using this to hide any uh, blemishes and mistakes in the aluminium. It'll help hide them. <coughs> so, we'll put that away for right now. Okay. Now, we will get on with our next deals we make. I've got a few of these made up so I can show you what they look like when, they're, when they've been made to use. And of course we will be making these too. This is one of the spokes. See, it's just a little piece of like wire. It's bent on one end, the other end straight. I dropped it in the baking soda, which we're done with for now. But now these spokes are just made out of a 50 millimeter uh, paper clip. I bought a big box of paper clips from Walmart to use. And here is what one of the paper clips looks like. <clears throat> well, more than one. But this is what they look like, and they have a plastic coating on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work the paper clips out completely straight. crazy thing about this uh, art here I'm doing this uh, working with aluminium cans 
because I got uh, I never learned how to do this from anybody. Nobody's ever showed it to me. I haven't watched any secret videos to show me how to do all this. Just have a love of working with, with metal sometimes. And then uh, my cataracts got so severe, I was stuck at home. Couldn't see during COVID. Couldn't get my eyes fixed because of COVID. Unless it was a life and death surgery around here, you couldn't get anything done. Oh, my blade is dull. I can't even can't even strip that plastic off of that. Let's get a new blade. I'll probably bump the camera getting them out. new blade what we're doing is we're cleaning the coating off clear plastic coating we don't want that one just throw out in the trash okay so now what we got here we got enough here to make four at least four spokes I didn't you see this will be enough to make at least four we'll get out our little pair of side cutters and we'll guess that's about halfway that was pretty close Gotta watch, sometimes they like to get hop away. <laughs> no fingernails so they're hard to pick up when they land on flat surface. Okay, those two are a little longer. That's alright though. So what we'll do now is we'll just take and we'll do that. Sorry about that. That happens time to time. Uncontrollable. Okay, there's just some spokes made. I, I, I vitalize an old pill bottle. I keep spokes. When I make these spokes, I uh, keep them in an old pill bottle. <laughs> That way when I need them, I, I can just sit here and make up a whole bunch of them. And then when I go to make a will, I just start pulling them out. Which, I like to do that a lot. So we'll get back to making more of these spokes. But on our first step, here we have a completed actual rim. Next, we'll end up having to make a hub, spokes, and... Uh, I have some cheats and I will have to show you some other ways but uh, I have a desired size I like the front spindles to be I 
or hub, in other words. So here we have a piece of, uh, oh, craft paper, let's call it, construction paper. Here we have the bottom that we cut off of the can, and what we'll do is we'll put that on there. And we're going to make a, uh, we're going to cut that out. We'll draw around it and then we'll cut it out and I want to use the very center of the can to make it. I want that uh, that dome, that little bit of a dome it makes a perfect wheel hub. <laughs> so we'll either, you can either take this, you can scotch tape it to it or like you can see it's got a lot of blue around the edges that's because I've uh, took and used a marker and traced around it on these before they cut them out. It's how I made the wheels on that bike that I've shown pictures of that I've been in the middle of building. And that bike's just been something I've been toying with in my spare time. So it is nowhere near finished. I still got a lot of work to do on it. But uh, we'll end up moving over and I'll probably finish. That's what I'll finish on cam, but i got to show you the steps of what we did to get to where we're at on that. So we'll just make some more parts because I'll build another bike later down the road. And we'll have part of the parts made. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to trace the marker perfectly around our little template that we made out of construction paper. Okay. Now we'll get out uh, some of my scissors I've dedicated to doing this with. parts will go in my aluminum recycling bucket. These are just going to be rough cut, cut out at first. What we'll do is we'll make a couple of these. I'll put them on top of each other and then I'll clean up the edges of them trying to make sure they're perfect perfectly round and match exactly and then because uh, what I'll do is I'll actually put them together and I'll drill a hole in the center and I'll run a little bolt with a nut to hold them together and I will spin them in my drill against the piece of this uh, sandpaper here to make sure they're perfect on the edges and then before I ever unbolt them I will drill 16 holes takes uh, 16 of them and I'll drill them perfectly sized around the part you know I will end up having to give you guys diagrams I've got stuff made up 
already from doing this before where I'd already worked it all out. I should have been better planned out ahead, but I ain't. So now I've cut one. I'll just take it, transfer it onto the next can bottom. I will take my marker, which is a, of course I got a Milwaukee marker, construction marker. I'm supposed to write, build, or draw on almost anything. video so we'll probably be calling it here and we'll be uh, doing another video real soon uh, like I said I'll go ahead and get the back wheel together I'll get all these cut out and get these more ready to go Just a hair of the blue, so I know I'm not cutting it too small. And that way I'll be able to definitely refine them down where they're matching pieces. And if I have too much to take off, I do have a big file that I use when I'm shaping these. That I can run them on the edge of the file and then hit them on the sandpaper to help cut them down quicker. But you, they don't have to be perfect at first. We'll make them perfect right now. We're just getting them roughed out to basically the same size. And we'll be making four of these because we're going to need uh, two for the back wheel too. So that's the other thing we'll be doing like that. And we'll grab our marker. Basically, we're just going to cut them out just like you see me cut these two out. Now, the center. Of course, the center will be done the same way I make the tubing for the frame, which I'll show you. But I've already got... Oop! Ah! You see that? I knocked my camera over. I'm going to leave that in. Let me grab it. I have a uh, one of the can the tea that I use for the lid. You'll see what brand of tea it is. It's uh, Arnold Palmer Light Half and Half Iced Tea with Lemonade. Iced Tea Lemonade. That's what I use uh, to get the top from. This one here I cut open and I use it just to uh, store tubing I make in. And I just you can do this by taking uh, different sized dowel rods then wrapping the aluminum and the can or sheet that I have can around it and gluing, super gluing it and then I trim off the excess can after it hardens and then I have a tube. Which, you know, I got you refine these down some when you go to use them. Depending on what you're doing with them. But, uh, yeah, we just take a can material like that and usually for frame I put the colored side in and wrap it and leave the silver part on the outside. <coughs> but as you see, I make, I, I make all different sizes and different lengths, all kinds of odds and end pieces here. <laughs> Stuff I did with it. Right there, that. Look at that wing we have to make right there's our uh, center drum size. So we'll leave that out with that stuff. We'll put the 
regrets this tubing. I all save all my little odds and end pieces from anything I've did. show you right here this is my spoke diagram I made let's see if I can get this to focus in better but that is my diagram for making this, the hubs as you can see I make them a little big at first that way I can trim them down to where they're perfectly that size. And then when I put it on there after I'm done and where the little over rings are, I hit the edges. And that'll tell me where to drill my spokes. And I'll mark them with a, with a smaller uh, fine tip marker. Show you what I use for that. I picked this markers here up at Walmart. They come in a three pack. It's three different sizes. Three different uh, tips, sizes. They have detail, fine, or actually, I, I don't. These came from. Uh, these might have come from DG. I think they came from DG. Yeah, these are Dollar, dollar General, not Walmart. I'm sorry. But detail, fine, and small. And these are. Uh, I use these a lot for doing my markings and stuff on stuff to be able to. Uh, have my measurements exactly where I need them, mark them, drill them, cut them, whatever I need to do. <clears throat> but I will start showing you more specialty things I made, like little jigs and stuff. I'll show you how to make those. And uh, one of my deals that I used to help make my hub that I guided on sounds crazy but I actually have a uh, stone for my Dremel tool and I have a little bolt that fits through it with a nut and I usually will take my aluminum cans and that way I can't over file them this is a stone for my uh, Dremel tool and it is the exact size I need so as you can see I always make these a little bigger I can drill them bolt them to it and I grind them down with the file and sandpaper where they're the same outer diameter as this. That way I keep everything uniform. My little cheat wheel. That's what that's for. That's my cheating wheel. I got a little baggie here I made. <laughs> but I keep stuff like this in. I got out so I could show you and keep stuff in so I don't lose it. And you can see I got my different strings in here for different size rims that I've made. So I've already got those figured out. My center hubs, you just showed you the paper for that. And uh, when we go to get in the motor, I'll show you this. This is something I made to help me uh, build the cylinders and heads for the motor. The jig to hold my, to line my pieces up when I glue them together. Well, I think I've ran and talked your ears off enough for this episode. We'll talk more. Uh, if there's anything you, you want me to explain better, anything you want me to talk about better, uh, we'll do that. Maybe I'll start telling you more in-depth stories about my gaming life and things that we do. And we've had some great parties this week. Maybe I could start telling you about some of the battles and that we did in-game. But, now it's time for me to clean up because I'm actually going to get off my game. So, I make these when I can. Sorry it took so long. Um, computer had a uh, hard drive failure on my uh, cold storage field. And then I had a uh, card go out as well. This older machine needed some maintenance. But, uh, 
I probably need to just invest on building another machine. This one here is pretty old. So until next time, guys, I come back. Like, subscribe, share. Tell your friends. Hopefully you liked it. If you didn't care for it, it'll get better, I promise. I'm just getting into this, getting used to it. But this video is almost an hour long, so we need to stop here. Alright, guys. Take care. Monty says, never fear. Monty's here. See you in game.